My name's Terry and I want to tell you how I changed my life. My life was very different five years ago. I was 30 years old. I was living with my missus uh, in the same bedroom that she grew up with, living with her parents. I had a job and I was earning 18,000 a year. And the best thing about that job was getting to 5 p.m. when I get to go to the gym. I'd get, I'd get to the gym, meet up with my boys, and we would you know, have a wicked workout, get pumped up, and I'd feel exhilarated. I'd leave the gym feeling absolutely great. Get home, and I'd uh, prepare my dinner. So I'd eat chicken and rice, and get my protein in. And then I would do one of three things. I would either A, watch Arsenal play, and they're my team, um, for hours. Or I'd, two, I'd be playing computer games, Xbox 360. I actually remember playing um, Halo for hours, that and GTA. Or three, uh, me and my missus would watch lots of TV, we'd watch um, box sets. And I can remember, we set ourselves a challenge to see if we can watch a whole season of Lost in a week. And we did, we watched episode after episode after episode. Um, and that was my life. We'd do this, you know, every day repetitively. And we were quite happy with it. But every so often I would, um, I would see, uh, I'd speak to friends and colleagues um, and I'd see that they're doing really well for themselves. Some of them own their own businesses, they earn lots of money and they had really nice cars and they went on really nice holidays and they were living a great life. And I would think, I would contemplate some nights and think, well, I want those things as well. But... But then I would start to think, well, they're either they're either very lucky, they've got rich parents that help them set up their business, that's the reason why they're doing well, uh, or they're smarter, they're cleverer than I am, so they must know something that I don't know, uh, or they're doing something that's a bit dodgy. And that's what I believe. Now, I grew up in a very, uh, I grew up in a poor area, poor estate. And I was brought up to believe that you know money didn't grow on trees, and that you know the rich get rich and the poor get poor. And I was told you have to work hard, hard, hard. And at school, I was taught that you know you need to get good grades because if you didn't get good grades, you were not going to end up. You're not going to amount to much. So I was instilled with the fact that I had an urgency to get good grades. I understood that, but I didn't really apply myself. So. Throughout school, you know, I left school with very poor GCSEs um, and I knew that I, I could have done more, but I didn't. But what I did know and what people were telling me is that if you get to university, if you get a degree, then you, that's it. Your life is sorted. Come up with a degree, you better get a job. So I then thought, OK, how do I do that? So I did a course at sixth form I went to college for a few years and I eventually I got to university and I did it and I was very cocky I was like yeah that's it I'm, I'm, I'm in university now everything's going to be sorted so I left uni went on to the work market and I reality hit in very quickly I wasn't getting the jobs that I wanted and instead I had to do other jobs I, I didn't I couldn't get the jobs that I wanted I needed the experience so I did many different things, customer services, credit control, did a whole host of things to get by. But eventually I landed at this job. It was a technical IT support one, the one that I, the one I was talking about earlier. So I was on, you know, 18,000 a year. And I was a first line support analyst. But this was like a glorified call logger. What, what, what it entailed is I'd pick up the phone I deal with IT problems, but couldn't fix it within two minutes. I'd have to put the phone down and escalate it to someone else. I hated that job. I spent eight hours a day on the phone. I really just I wanted to do something more technical. Um, and what I believed for myself was that if I wanted to earn more, if I wanted some of these things that my my other more successful colleagues and friends had, I thought. How am I going to do this? And I thought the only way that I could do this is by getting more senior positions. And with every with every, every promotion, I get a bit more money. So I hoped, right, this is what I thought. I thought, right, you should be earning 30,000 pounds by the time you're 30. 
and by the time you're 40, you should be earning 40,000 pounds. By the time you're earning 50, you got, you, by the time you're 50, you should be earning 50,000 pounds. That's what I thought. But the thing is, I my my work ethic and my mentality wasn't quite right. I believe that my employer should give me the training and the tools necessary for me to do the promotion. And I felt that, you know, I deserved it. I didn't realise that I had to work hard and become excellent. So very quickly, um, I was sacked from that, that role uh, for being consistently late and for only doing just enough to keep the job. I hated that job. And I remember on the day I got sacked, I was driving home. And I got home, I spoke to my missus. She goes, good. She says, I'm glad that you don't work there because you're worth more than that. They don't, they don't realize what they're missing. She said, Terry, you, there's a, there's a lot more in you. You deserve, you can do great things for your life. You can, you can do anything you want, but in order for us to move forward, I need you to, to be open-minded. I need you to, to read some of the, some of the stuff that I've been looking at. And she's been, um, my missus has been into, um, um, positive thinking and self-development for many years. She's been trying to get me to read these books for so long and I kind of point blank disregarded. I said, oh, you know what? I know what I'm doing. You do what you do and I know what I'm doing. But she said, you know, I need you to be open and, and if you really want to take charge of your life, read these things for me. So I said, okay. And she handed me various different books. She handed me books like... Um, the Alchemist, The Power of Now, uh, The Psychology uh, psychology of Success, Rich Dad Poor Dad was another one, and there was a book in DVD called The Secret. I'll tell you a little, about, a little bit about this one in a second. So she handed me all this new material. There was lots of material and a, and a lot of information to, to try and dissect. So I was out of a job and this is what I needed to do. So I'm looking through the material and this this uh, this one book, it says it said some ridiculous things. It said, you know, think of your life as a think there's a genie in the sky. Make a wish and that thing will manifest itself into your world. And I was thinking, babes, this stuff that you're reading is mumbo jumbo. It ain't going to work. You can't just will something into being. And I flat out rejected some of these things. Um, but she said, just keep an open mind and read it all the way through. Please, just read it all the way. Keep an open mind. So I said, right, I will, but just know that I'm just this airy, fairy, wishy-washy, you know, believe and you shall receive kind of thing. It doesn't sit well with me, but I'm going to do it anyway for you. But as I kept reading this book, I got through it and um, there were certain things that I did pick up on and that, that sparked an interest. And in particular, the area that I was interested in was the brain and neurology. And they said specific things. There were, there were individuals that were quoted in this book, well-respected reverends, well-respected, successful people that have made it. And they all seemed to gravitate around uh, the, 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 the brain and neurology. There was a study. Uh, they took, they took uh, several Olympic athletes and they wired them up with these nodes to study their brain waves. And they told them, "Listen, we want you to, uh, we want you to run this race in your mind. Imagine that you're running the race in your mind." And they would look at the brain waves and they'd study them. Then they'd got them to run the race for real, and then they'd study the brain waves. They'd match the two. And they found that their subconscious mind wasn't able to differentiate between what was real and what was imagined. And that basically said that the brain is very powerful. It's a very powerful tool. And the potential of the human brain hasn't yet been fully explored. And that kind of sparked an interest in me. So I was more gravitated to, because I'm a technical person, I was more gravitated to science and facts. So... The things like this really interested me, but it led me on to look at 
books on psychology and books on uh, uh, neuroscience and the reasons why people do do what they do and I loved all of that stuff it gave me an insight into uh, it what well, I started to form a picture of what successful people were doing successful people were thinking in a completely different way and I learned that success is predictable there's a formula to it and I began to build up this picture and I started to apply some of these techniques to my life so literally within a few weeks I'd opened up this whole new world and I began to believe that things were possible for me so what I did I was out of work I started applying for what I knew I wanted as I knew I loved computers so I knew that I wanted to to have a job in that so I started to apply for jobs ones that were completely out of my you know that I, I knew I wasn't I was underqualified for I didn't have enough experience but I did anyway uh, and I would get these interviews I get to the interviews and I showed up with so much enthusiasm and determination the interviewer could see that they could see that I was determined they could see that I had a willingness to learn and I would get these jobs because I believed in myself so much. I'd get there, I'd be sitting in reception, all happy, smiling. The interviewer would come in, shake my hand, hi Mr Thomas, and from that point forward I knew that I got it. And I'd get into these roles. This one, I managed to increase, I got that job, and I managed to increase my salary by 7,000. And what I did when I was in that job, as I made it my mission to, to become outstanding, I got to work early. These are the things that I learned. I learned that I needed to be the best. I needed. I knew that I needed to develop a reputation for speed and dependability. People had to know that I was going to do what I was going to do. I made it my mission to go out and if I didn't know anything, to go and speak to the right people. I wasn't afraid to speak to anyone. This is what I learned. I wasn't afraid to be vulnerable. I wasn't afraid to make mistakes, whereas before, I was afraid of making any silly little mistake and I didn't want to be ridiculed. And if, if I did make a mistake, I would be looking for excuses why and, and, and to shift the blame. But I knew that you could successful people didn't work that way. They took responsibility for their actions and they looked to rectify those. I, I identified key skills that they needed to move them up and they needed and they realised that um, by taking on board more responsibilities is how you would get your promotion. So I gradually did take responsibility. I put my hand up and I, I, um, I asked for more responsibility and I got it. I was very quickly promoted and I became a very, I became a valued member of the team and I became a, quite a star individual, well respected. Well, that wasn't enough for me. And I, I loved that role, but it wasn't enough. I spent a few years there and I decided I needed to move on. So I made a plan for myself. I designed a plan of what I wanted, how much I wanted to earn. And I decided I wanted to earn over 500 pounds a day. And it might seem a bit out there, a bit high, but that was what I wanted. And I identified key skills and areas that would get me the day right so that's when I decided I was going to work for myself I became self-employed and um, yeah I became a contractor now with contracting there are uh, you you can you get hired in to do a specific job and the lengths normally vary from three months to six months to twelve months so I started off and I got myself a three month contract it was doing sort of desktop support or something along those lines and uh, you get paid you get paid a, a bit more so I went into this role and I had to go and make um, I had to go in and um, get to know the whole team understand what the requirements were and really knuckle down because when you're self-employed you get judged on what you do and knowing the information that I know I know that I would get there Half an hour before I was due to start work, I'd leave an hour after I was supposed to, after I, I was due to finish. 
and nine out of ten times I would only take half an hour lunch break and I knew that I needed to work while I was at work and I, I knew with some of the principles that I'd learned that I could be 60% more productive than some of the permanent staff. So I knew that at the end of every day I was I was doing quality work and being productive and people could see that. And I would go in, I'd learn new skills because there'd be a new host of technologies. I'd do that contract for three months and learn everything there is to know about that role. And then I would go and find another one. And I did this. I kept doing this and every new contract that I would get, my day rate would go up and up and up. So as I'm doing these contracts, I'm identifying more key skills and I'm getting more tools under my belt. And as a result, my day rate's going up and up because I'm learning new things. I did this, uh, I did this for, for, for three years and every single one, I got better and better and better. I became more specialized. But I would say that I wouldn't have been able to sustain that if it wasn't something I loved. I absolutely love what I do. So after I would, after getting from work, I'd come home and I would continue to study in the areas that I knew I needed to, to, to become better at, which I knew which would result in the next contract in me getting a higher day rate. So it was like a, a it was like a cycle that never ended. And that takes me through to today. I earn more in two months than I did in an entire year back then. And it feels absolutely great that I've, you know, that I've achieved that. But what, what doesn't feel good is knowing that there's people out there like me who I speak to who still think the same way, still think that it's, it's not possible for them. Me and my partner were social creatures, so we would go out and we'd bump into to individuals and they, they would tell us you know, things like, we hate our jobs and we think the world is against us. And we would, we would be talking to these individuals, we'd be trying to tell them, listen, you know, it doesn't have to be that way, you can have these things too. And it became a bit preachery. You know, we, we said, we'd spend 20 minutes saying, you can do this, you just need to do this, do that. And these people would be like, wow, okay, there's a lot of information here coming across very, very preachery. Uh, so, and with the thing is, we'd, never, we'd bump into these individuals and we might not ever see them again. And that was like disheartening that we weren't able to, um, to change their lives. We weren't able to leave them with something that they could actually use without forgetting it. So that got us thinking, what if we could create something that people could take, uh, people could use, and it, you know, and it could teach them what we've learned. So now what we do is we, we find these individuals, we give them a business card, and we say, if you're serious about changing your life, go to this website, sign up, put your email address in, and get your free information.